That last one was pretty brutal. I just wanted to say thank you for watching the previous video. Uh, it sort of got really, really popular really, really fast, and I did not expect that. I'm very happy it resonated with a lot of you. I'm actually really happy that it got a lot of criticism as well, especially in the comment section. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes. I'm gonna answer some of the more reasonable questions. Maria posted, 80% of New York's ventilator patients die. Tell me why is that? So I thought that was an excellent question. So this video is gonna be about why stating that ventilators are killing patients is a gross overstatement and a gross oversimplification of an extremely complex problem. I believe that she's referring to and what a lot of media sites have picked up on is this article published in the Journal, Journal of American Medical Association just last week. So an original version of their article, they stated an 88% mortality rate in patients who ended up on a ventilator in their hospital system. But the fact is that this statistic was very, very misleading, so much so that they had to publish a correction and added a paragraph to the discussion session that is here, clarifying that because so many of these patients are in the hospital for so long that it sort of skews this statistic. The interesting thing is that these patients, they take time to recover. And the statistic that was originally written in the paper, it didn't take into account 831 people that were still hospitalized in the system. So as time goes on, they expect this, num this mortality number to decrease. So the second claim I wanted to address was when people state that typical ventilator mortality rates are 35 to 40%, which is 100% true. What's also true is that this is not a typical time in hospitals and this is not a typical disease in hospitals. By stating this statistic, people are inherently thinking, oh, if ventilator mortality rates are typically 35 to 40%, and I'm seeing data on the news saying that COVID ventilator mortality rates are closer to 88%, these New York City doctors are definitely doing something wrong or they're definitely hurting their patients, which is just absolutely false. Um, these are not typical times, and this is not a typical isolated respiratory failure like we've been seeing in the past. So this virus seems to be unique in its horrendousness. So not only does it affect the respiratory system, but it seems to cause higher rates of kidney failure. It seems to cause higher rates of blood clots in the legs, in the lungs, and even in the arterial vasculature. And then it also seems to cause like some sort of cardiomyopathy and predispose people to ventricular arrhythmias. But that last one might be due to a drug that may or may not be being pushed right now. This is not a isolated respiratory failure like during typical times. The reality is that when you go to evaluate a patient and they're in front of you unresponsive, gasping for air, saturations in the 50s, 60s, there's almost no choice. You are, we are forced to put them on mechanical ventilation or just wait for their heart to stop, wait for them to cardiac arrest. Links to all these articles are in the description below. I'll try my best to sort of upload on a more regular basis.